video I'm going to focus specifically on how to set up an environment in order to install WHD load and then some WHD load games. So to start with we need three different tools and we will need these from Aminet and the WHD load site. So the first one is LHA which is you could see it as an Amiga version of zip. Then you need an installer tool which is one that was made by Commodore but it's not built into the operating system by default and then WHD load so let's start with Aminet A-M-I-N-E-T for LHA look for a tool called LHA.run and there should be one file then save that then look for install just type installer 4, that should find it. And the one you want is this installer 4.3, which is developed by Amiga Technologies, and the date should be 1996. Okay, now that you've done that, look for the WHD load site. So scroll down to WHD load user. So this includes WHD load and a few of the support tools. Okay, what we will also need are some installers for the games. So in this case, I'm going to use a public domain example, and this is Katakis, published by Factor 5. In order to find that, we click on Installs, and we look for K, and then go to Katakis. There's also some information, uh, but the file you want is this katakis.lha okay that should now be complete what we also need is the game so this is the ADF file so if you look on a search engine for factor 5 there should be three games unfortunately BC Kid this particular version of the ADF file is corrupted so it doesn't actually work with WHD load although it will work on a real Amiga and sadly the same is true for Turrican however Katakis and R-Type do work so if you click Katakis and save that what we should now have is a folder that includes all the files that you've just downloaded what I would probably recommend doing is unzipping the zip files so this is R-Type or Katakis of the ADFs you've actually downloaded and unzip them to their own folder called ADFs. Once you've done that what you need to do is make sure that you've set up WinUAE such as it was in the previous tutorial and for the hard disks make sure that you've got the second disk set up for your in this case I've just put everything in C colon temp so this is the directory that you downloaded the files to. Let's start by opening a, a shell. Probably the easiest way of doing this is going to workbench then system shell. Okay. In my case I've called the drive that I've mapped to this temporary directory is called stuff. So cd stuff colon then type list and that will show you everything in the directory. So this is going to get fairly busy fairly soon. What we need to do first is to extract the LHA executable. This comes as what's called a .run file, so this is a, a pre-built extractor. So type LHA.run and this will extract itself. Okay, now that we've done that, and this is where the screen starts to get a little bit tight, go to stuff and then you will see one file in there called LHA.68K that's the file that we want so this is the one that's for the basic Amiga so this is an unexpanded Amiga let's rename that to LHA we now need to copy this into the system directory if you go to your workbench directory right click on it window and make sure it says show all files otherwise you won't see this properly. If we scroll to the C directory what we now need to do is drag this LHA file 
into the C directory. I've already got this in there so we can just replace it. Okay, now that's done. You can test it out by just typing LH, A, enter, and Bob's your uncle. Okay, what we're going to do now is to install the installer program. So the installer is a tool made by Commodore and it's quite similar to typical installers under Windows or the Mac. If we go back to the stuff directory, stuff, type in list, and we need to type LHAX for extract, install, helps if I spelt it correctly, 43 underscore 3 dot LHA enter. So this should be extracting now. Okay, now that that's done we go back to the stuff directory and we should see this installer 3. What you need to do now is to right click on this, click, oh, move the cursor rather up to window, show all files and we should see the installer. So what we need to do here is to copy this again into the system C directory. Or workbench, window, show all files, C, and then drag this over. I've already done this before, so I already have this file. So let's just copy it again. Now that this is done, we go back to the shell and we need to go to the stuff directory. CD stuff and what we now need to do is to install WHD load. LHA X WHD load underscore user dot LHA enter. After a couple of minutes you should see all these files extracted. So let's close this down, go back to the stuff and you should see a draw called WHD load. So let's double click that and then double click install. Proceed with install, OK. Just leave the default as the selected draw as C and then let it install. Again just accept the default, proceed and let these files install. OK that should now be done after a couple of minutes or so. So we click proceed. We now have all the correct files set up in the Amiga environment in order to install the games now. So we have LHA installed, we have the Commodore installer installed, and we have WHD load installed. What we now need to do is go back to the shell. You can either right click and do this, or you can just go the way before. We go back to stuff, and in this case, we're going to install Katakis. Do LHAX Katakis.LHA. We should have both a zip file and an LHA file. So the zip we can ignore for the moment. This was the ADF image which we've put in the ADFs directory. And we have the Katakis.LHA, which is the WHD installer for Katakis. Confusing, I know. Okay, now that that is done, close this, go back to stuff, and we should see katakis.hd. This is the installer for the game. We click, or rather double click, install, back to an installer screen, proceed, ignore that warning, the 4.3 installer works perfectly fine. Okay, we just get some readme, just close that. And what I've done is created a new drawer under stuff and I've called it games. So you do make new drawer and then just proceed. But I've already created that. Click proceed. And yeah, we'll delete it because I've already installed. Just go with the normal install. We don't need any fancy icons at this stage. That's more if you've got an expanded unit. Okay, so now what we need to do is to press F12 and we need to tell WinUAE to look for the ADF image. In this case I have the three from the Factor 5 website. Set the floppy drive emulation speed to turbo just to save you some time. Click OK. 
then click Start, click Proceed, and we should now be done. We should have Katakis installed, so to check, double click Stuff, you should have a games directory, if you're not seeing it, do the right click, Window, Show All, and we should have Katakis, and some games will give you a nice icon for the runnable, some don't. Double click Katakis, and you should see the WHD load screen. Okay, just to show that this is working, I will eject the floppy disk. Okay. You should now see a start screen for the game, and Bob's your uncle, the game is installed, so you press F10 to quit. The last thing that we need to do is to copy over the contents of the games directory onto the compact flashcard. The stuff directory is mapped to a, a physical directory on the PC, so this doesn't exist on the compact flashcard. If you open up the work directory and then go to the games directory, just drag that over, this will copy it, and we're done. So we should now have the Katakis directory on the compact flashcard. If we quit that, yes. Okay, in order to use this compact flashcard on a real Amiga and in order to be able to boot from it you have to use one of these which is a compact flash to two and a half inch IDE adapter. Unfortunately you can't use one of these which is a PCM CAA to compact flash adapter. Unfortunately the Amiga 1200 won't boot from one of these. You can use them and I suppose this is really the topic for another tutorial, you can use this to transfer files between a PC and the Amiga but what you need here is another compact flash card and you need to have either installed a driver that lets the Amiga read the DOS file system or you have to do an install in WinUAE and transfer things that way it's probably easier to just set everything up using a compact flash card, stick it on one of these, and then put that in the Amiga and then be done with it. Unless you want to install more games. Okay, in this case we take the compact flash card, place it into the adapter, and then you need to open up your Amiga 1200. Slightly easier in my case because I've done this a few times so the top's already open. On the inside you should see here a two and a half inch ID adapter. This is quite filthy on the inside. This is custom on mine and this is the accelerator card so just ignore that. So what you need to do is to plug this in here. You may also find that there is a, a hard disk caddy. I've taken this out on mine because I don't really need it. Okay, so we've now replaced the keyboard and we have the compact flash to ID adapter installed. So let's close this case. And let's power on the Amiga. What you should see is some activity on the hard disk light. So it might take a few seconds to load up. And if all's gone to plan, you should see the Amiga desktop, which is the same setup as on WinUAE. You probably won't see this DF0 disk. This is just because I don't have a, a physical floppy disk driving the machine. I took that out a few years ago. If we go to the work directory, you'll see games. We take the Katakis directory, double click, and we should be ready to start playing. and there you go. Well, that's really just an easy example of an Amiga game which you can install using WHD load. So once you've done this for one you can do it for any others. All you need are the ADF images for the games which you can get through standard software for ripping them from the actual discs 
and you just need the WHD load file for that particular game. You might need to be careful because different regions of games will have slightly different discs so maybe a PAL release will be different from a, an NTSC release so you'll just have to make sure that you read the instructions carefully from the WHD load for each game that you use. Hopefully you should have hours and hours of fun playing Amiga games from a real Amiga all of the hard disk without having to mess around with floppies. Hope that's been of some use. Thanks for watching.